<sighs> All right, sink clap. Yo, Jamie from uh, Jamie's Detailing, and today is my very first day back after what felt like a seemingly long winter break and then a surprising four weeks off after my accident. So if you guys are wondering what happened here and how I got these burns and stuff, you guys can definitely check out my past video where I kind of address all of this and what I'm kind of expecting here in the future, but I don't expect this to be permanent. Um, so if you guys wanna know more about that, you guys can check out the previous video where I explain all of this. But for today, I wanna talk to you guys about all the stuff that that I'm going to be taking out of the detailing rig from 2023 and 2022 and all of the new stuff that I'm going to be re either replacing it with or new stuff that I'm using now in my detailing process that I wasn't before. And I even have something that I did during uh, the whole winterization of this detailing rig that I did not do correctly. So I want to address that with you guys so that if you guys are winterizing one of these vehicles in the future, you guys know what to um some of uh, just a little tip for you guys as far as winterizing so you guys don't have issues like i did let's go ahead and jump into today's video and um yeah i am super excited to be back We are here in the home garage. It is my first day back since the accident. If you guys want to know what happened, what happened to the, my face, how we got all this black paint splattered everywhere, you guys can check out my last video where I explain everything that happened in during the accident. Am I okay? Yes, and I am finally back to work after four weeks off. Today, I want to actually show you guys what I have in the detailing rig for 2024. Now, over the past four weeks that I've kind of had off, I've been, you know, doing some, some things on and off what I can. My hand was pretty messed up for a couple weeks, so I really couldn't do any computer work. I couldn't do any detailing because I couldn't get any chemicals. I couldn't wear gloves, that type of thing. Anyways, here in Chicago, we take a couple months off of mobile detailing. The winters here in Chicago are way too random, way too un, you know, you, you just, you can't predict how the weather is gonna be here during the winter. So if you guys can afford it, or if you guys can manage getting all of your detailing work in during, you know, eight to 10 months of detailing, it, plan on having eight solid months of detailing, two kind of months where you're not doing a lot of mobile detailing, um, or you're really kind of having to adjust schedules a lot because of weather and stuff like that. Um, and you really have two solid months out of the year that you really just don't want to have to plan on detailing. And that's what my business does. We plan on doing eight solid months of detailing, typically starting in March. December through February are pretty unpredictable. So we really have to play it by ear. This this year, winter is over early. So today it is the end of February and it's already, you know, 65 degrees today it, it was. So that is ridiculous for the end of February here in Chicago. But it means that we can start our detailing season early, which is awesome. As today, I wanna actually take you guys through the detailing rig, show you guys all, some of the stuff that I'm moving out from the past couple seasons that I was using, or some stuff that I really haven't even used at all. And I wanna show you guys some stuff that I'm actually gonna be moving into the detailing rig for 2024. And a lot of it I've already moved in over the past four weeks that I've had off. Um, so. Uh, today, I kind of want to update you guys on the detailing rig, show you guys the stuff that we're going to be using for 2024, and show you guys some of the stuff that we're not going to be using anymore for 2024. And there's a lot of stuff that we actually upgraded as well. So I want to show you guys some of the changes that we're making uh, to the tools and equipment that we're using. And I want to show you guys some of the stuff that I, I've uh, changed opinions on. And during winter, um, when we had when we kind of winterized our detailing rig, there was a couple things that I didn't do right. One major thing with our MTM Hydro uh, SG28 uh, 
gun here so i want to show you guys that just so you guys are aware and so you guys can avoid having that issue with your guys's equipment but anyways let's go ahead and jump back to this t desk real quick let me show you guys what i want to show you guys here and then we'll move the detailing rig back in so that we can i can kind of show you guys each little section of the detailing rig and show you guys you know the stuff that i've moved in there and sh show you guys some of the stuff that we're going to be pulling out um if we haven't already let's go ahead and jump back to the desk and show you guys some stuff real quick um, as far as equipment. So the first thing that I wanna show you guys is when I was winterizing our vehicle last year, one thing that I did not do good enough was actually make sure that all the water was drained out of our pressure washing lines. If you guys pull the trigger after you have everything disconnected, if you guys pull the trigger, more water always drips out. Now, I obviously did not either get all the water out or I completely forgot to do it, but when I went to go use this thing uh, for the first time this year, it literally just started spraying everywhere. So I think I just dropped that little red piece, but it's fine. I'm probably gonna throw this whole thing out. Um, anyways, guys, taking this thing apart, you guys are gonna notice, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get it on camera good. But basically there is a huge crack right here. And this is actually the housing I think I need a little little uh, pliers or something to get that out. But anyways, guys, this housing right here, this body right here, actually is what holds that uh, the, the trigger part, the mechanism that moves in and out that lets the water through. And water actually gets trapped in here. So when you guys go to winterize it, make sure that you hold that trigger down and make sure all the water drips out of here. And if you guys can, just store this in your garage or in a normal warm space. That way you don't even have to worry about it. Everything else, the water should ex be able to expand inside of your like pressure washing lines and stuff like that. Um, but you want to make sure that you get all the water out of your pressure washing gun and the pressure washer itself. Otherwise, you guys definitely will have leaking. And the first time you go to use this thing, it will be spraying everywhere. So, uh, so yeah, that was one thing that I did not do good enough during the winter. So I had to replace my MTM Hydro uh sg28 and i ended up going with the sgs 28 because the swivel that i had on this guy under pressure uh this swivel didn't move at all it completely locked up and would not swivel whatsoever so i'm hoping that the swivel on the mtm hydro the one that's actually built into the gun is going to be a better swivel than the one that i bought um, separately from MTM Hydro. So I would definitely splurge, get spend the extra couple bucks to get the uh, one with the built-in swivel. I know some people say that, you know, the Quick Connect itself will swivel, but under pressure, it just doesn't swivel how you guys quite want it to. So I'm really hoping that this is a good swivel that's built into here. But I'll update you guys on that later on in the season when we get to use it a little bit more. As moving on, my absolute favorite clay mitt is the one from Nanoskin, the blue, the one with the blue backing. This year, I wanted to just try a a better or a more, a stronger, a medium grade, I think this is, medium grade uh, clay mitt. So I still have some blue ones left over, um, but I wanted to get one of these uh, medium grade ones, um, specifically for, I have some overspray from when we were doing our winter maintenance. I painted a bunch of stuff on the uh, detailing rig, uh, repainted it silver. So I have a little bit of overspray on one of the fenders. So I wanna actually have this available for any time that we're doing headlights or anything like that and we, maybe might potentially on accident get some overspray somewhere this is going to knock that off real easily these are the wheel mitts from the rag company these wheel mitts are my absolute favorite wheel mitts they're somewhat large somewhat a little larger than your typical wheel mitt 
Um, they fit on my hand a lot nicer because they are larger. Um, and they just last forever. My last package that I got, guys, the only reason I'm ordering more is because I only have two of them. So I'm constantly washing it. But these ones right here, guys, I, I had to get more of these. I want like, enough for a whole week um, without having to do laundry. You know, I hate laundry, God damn it. One big correction that I need to make from previous statements, um, and that's on these guys, the Auto Fiber Scrub Ninjas. Um, these guys right here have been updated since my very first time using them. I used these when they very first came out. When these first came out, what I think they first came out at that time, but about a year and a half ago, they were really getting pushed hard on YouTube. And the original Scrub Ninjas worked amazingly well, but they had two major issues with them. And let me actually grab one so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, guys, I knew I was gonna wanna talk about this at some point because, you know, every once in a while you try a product and then they'll update it or um, maybe you'll use it in a different way and you'll have different opinions on it. So. Are, are you videoing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, can I just, uh, I need Ellie. Oh, okay, I'll go grab her. Okay, sorry. Oh, you're all good. <laughs> Ellie, your mom's here. All right, so these original Scrub Ninjas, to me, had a couple little issues that I really just didn't want to use them or avoided using them. And one of the biggest reasons, guys, was because of the just the basic colors of this. Now, when these originally came out, they were using this really light gray color on the back. And on the front here, they had a white for that you know, the, the scrubbing material. This is like what they're known for is this part right here. And um, anyways, guys, this part right here, as you guys can see, it gets so yellowed over time. And this honestly happened the very first time I used it, it turned extremely yellow like this and it just kind of looked gross. <laughs> so I didn't like them from the very get go. And then on top of that, these ones don't have rips, but the very first one I used, which is inside, they rip, it ripped like crazy all across the seams and everything. And it was my very first time using the product. And after that, I just kind of immediately had a bad opinion on the product. But then, um, and I, I, I kind of stopped using them right away because I had other stuff that had this similar material on it. But it wasn't this thick or this plush, you know, this, uh long of fibers so these worked way better but the other one didn't it was a dark dark gray material instead of the white and um so i liked it better because it didn't get on dirty and nasty looking and if a client came over and saw me cleaning their interior with a really gross looking rag or something you know i just don't like that kind of stuff so anyways so i, I didn't use these when i first got them because they ripped and because they yellowed so I didn't like them at first. Now, check this out. Scrub Ninja Max. It has a white side, which this is how white this side was when I first got it. You guys can see the difference. They, the yellow, the white side yellows really, really quickly. But these new Scrub Ninja Maxes, guys, they have a black side and they have a white side new material the material is slightly different uh from what they originally came out with at least from the facebook group where i kind of mentioned my gripes with this thing they actually took said in the facebook group that these have been updated they have they have been upgraded updated new stitching on the side and i can tell you guys right away that the stitching on the side is so much better than these original scrub ninjas the stitching is completely different so I think these are gonna work way, way better. So I bought these again to try out, and I think I'm really gonna like the Scrub Ninja Maxes over those original, uh, you know, version one Scrub Ninjas. So anyways, guys, I'm giving these another try for this year. These save you so much time when it comes to interiors, because you can use them on plastics, you can use them on leather, you can use it on anything in the inside of the vehicle. Um, so yeah, having one tool that does a whole lot of stuff, I can just keep a brush next to me, 
get the nooks and crannies with the brush and get all the big sections with this. So I'm going back to the Scrub Ninjas this year, giving them another, another try, and uh, I'll let you guys know how these work out. Now, one thing that got completely destroyed in our accident, and I just ordered a bunch more of and just haven't put them in the detailing vehicle yet, are is another product from Auto Fiber, and that is their uh, saver applicators. The saver applicators, these are my favorite ceramic coating applicators. I can use them for, you know, head, I can use them for headlights, I can use them for entire vehicle ceramic coatings, um, and I can use them for, you know, you can use them for anything ceramic coating wise. These are my go-to. They also make a smaller version if you guys are doing other stuff like wheels and whatnot. But anyways, these are my favorite applicators for ceramic coatings. So I just restocked on these. I'll put a couple in the vehicle and the rest I'll put on our detailing shelf. But anyways, guys, um, I had to get some more wheel mitts from the rag company. So the rag company and auto fiber are my, like my two go-to companies for microfibers, applicators, all of that type of stuff. The rag company, typically where I get all the towels and stuff from, uh, auto fiber, typically where I get more of the, the specialty stuff, the applicator pads, the scrubbers, the that type of stuff. So. Um, either way, both companies have tons of awesome products and I'm constantly, you know, perusing their website to try something new. So anyways, guys, both amazing companies, uh, scrub or, uh, nano skin is my go-to for all my clay stuff. And, um, yeah, MTM hydro is my go-to for all of my pressure washing needs, which you guys will see in just a minute. But now that we actually went through a couple things here on the desk and I kind of updated you on that, now let's go ahead and bring in our detailing rig so that I can just really quickly kind of show you guys some of the stuff that we're going to be pulling out for 2023 and show you guys a bunch of the stuff that's going to be going into the vehicle for or show you a bunch of the stuff that's coming out from 2023. And I wanna show you guys a bunch of this new stuff that we're gonna be putting in for 2024. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and check out the detailing vehicle. We just got her all maintenanced up, new exhaust, um, all sorts of stuff. We got new fog lights on, we got the front bumper painted. I really wanna show you guys all that stuff, but that is what I was doing when I had my accident. So honestly, I haven't even circled back and started editing any of that uh, content so I'm probably gonna take my time on that and show you guys some of the side stuff that we do here in the de in the detailing garage because I don't just detail here in the garage I do all my own maintenance I do um, all of that kind of stuff I used to be a mechanic so I love that type of work as well and I want to start incorporating more of that work here on the channel now that we checked out everything on this table let's go ahead and bring in the detailing vehicle so I can update you guys on all the stuff that we kind of have moved into there for 2024 and i want to show you guys some of the stuff that we're taking out for 20 from 2023. So I figured let's start out with the party end of the vehicle, the detailing rig. Let's start with the back. What have we changed over the past few weeks or since the, you know, winter time? What have we changed back here? Now, first off, I still have some stuff that I still need to address or still need to attend to. Primarily, you know, the painting, all the little stuff and stuff like that as far as this goes. But today we're really just focusing on the equipment itself. So first thing I had to change guys is the pressure washer reel this thing has gone out on me three times already and luckily the reel has an awesome warranty over at Harbor Freight so I can continue just bringing it in and getting a warranty one in fact I have our the one I currently need to go back and warranty I just have one on hand now at this point but anyways, uh, this pressure washer reel goes out all the time. Now, I don't know what the fittings are rated to. I've seen a ton of videos online that say, you know, hey, the fittings on here, it, that's not what the, the, the fittings are not rated to 100 PSI or whatever, 150 PSI. It's only the hose that's on there that's rated at that. So 
everybody nobody really knows what the pressure rating is of the fittings on these pressure washer reels but i can tell you just from experience that they're either crappy fittings or they really can't handle the pressure of a pressure washer um and i'm kind of thinking it's the latter on that one because uh it's literally gone out three, four times now. I've had to warranty it out, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's just been a pain in the ass with these this pressure washer, using this air hose reel as a pressure washer reel. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. If you guys haven't invested in a pressure washer reel yet, you might wanna spend the extra money and get one that's pressure washer specific, not one that you, know, you might like the look of it or whatever else. Get one that actually is for pressure washing. Don't try to adapt one that's for air hoses because it'll just cause you a ton of headache. Um, eventually, this thing's gonna just start spraying everywhere on you, and it's a huge pain in the ass. But Harbor Freight has an awesome warranty, and now I just keep one on hand. So at the at the most, guys, it's just a couple connections that I have to reconnect. I'll take the hose off of here so that. Um, it's not on the pressure washer reel, so it'll be like that for a day or two until I can swap the reel back out and put the hose back on it. So it's not a huge deal, but it is a pain in the ass to have to change this thing every four or five months because the pressure washer reel goes out. So anyways, the pressure washer reel is brand new, but the hose that's on here I've been using since I started the business and I haven't had any problems with that. Um, now with the pressure washer i have definitely been grabbing more and more mtm hydro stuff so i just picked up the extender the extension wand the extension for the wand i got this guy just because i'm washing so many trucks and suvs these days um it just doesn't even make sense to have just the short one i definitely want to have like a longer hose so i can get the tops of the vehicle without having to try to reach all the way over like i've been doing for the past year and a half so this is just going to be super nice to have um on hand for when i'm washing trucks and suvs and stuff that i had to do a lot of reaching on so anyways i'm hoping i can get things wrenched down a little bit better now that i have that extension another thing that i upgraded and since our past videos i don't know if i went over this guys but i also got the mtm hydro 25 degree with a 3.5 millimeter tip the most important thing to me guys is that 3.5 millimeter that really significantly drops the pressure on my pressure washer that way i don't have to worry about shipping paint or damaging uh surfaces with my pressure washer i want to really get that thing down to like 800 psi versus anything above that that way i know i'm safe to be washing vehicles and uh i don't have to worry about being gentle the whole time that i'm trying to pressure wash it still got the exact same air hose reel have not had any problems with it i'm using a quarter inch hose instead of the three eighths hose i figure it's a lighter hose this is a uh uh, it starts with a P, but it's it's basically this material. It doesn't scratch the vehicle whatsoever. It uh, it's a really nice flexible material, and um, I really just haven't had any issues with it. And being a smaller diameter hose means that I'm going to get a higher pressure at a lower volume, but with the air tools that I'm running, I don't need a huge volume of air. I just need a high pressure of air so I can blast out those, uh, you know, nooks and crannies with the Tornador. I can use it for my detail gun right there um, and stuff like that. So I don't need like a crazy volume of air. I just want powerful air, if that makes any sense. So I'm using the quarter inch hose versus a three eighths inch hose, meaning that my air compressor can keep up with everything a lot easier. So anyways, that's what I'm using as far as an air hose reel. Another thing that I'm upgrading, guys, is I went with the MTM Hydro uh, foam cannon this year. I really don't do two bucket washes anymore. I'm using primarily a foam cannon. I have a rinse bucket, and that's it. Um, for my average car, that's, how, that's my wash method um, of choice, is doing foaming the car multiple times and rinsing it off as I go um, versus continuing, continually having to dip my wash media into buckets and worry about, you know, 
scratching up the vehicle that way it's just so much easier guys i don't know why people still use the two bucket method um unless you're washing a car that really really needs that level of uh care and even if i was doing that i'd still probably be foaming it with the foam cannon um to get it all you know kind of just have that extra lubrication on the surface all of the detailing supplies and stuff like that they've stayed pretty much the same so if you guys want to know the detailing supplies that i use as far as consumables you guys can check out our website on the jamiesdetailing.com website we have a resources page with you guys can buy our t-shirts if you guys want to help support the channel but most importantly guys it has everything that i have inside of this detailing vehicle is on there with links so that you guys can check out the exact products and tools that i'm using and if you guys want to order those for yourself you guys can order those for yourself and those links help out the channel directly so if you guys want to go shopping um with those links those definitely help out the channel so i appreciate you guys for using those as always um but uh, I guess I'll show you guys one big thing that I'm using differently this year, guys, is we're using DIY detail polish now. Um, this works for like 90% of the vehicles that we're trying to do. It cuts and it polishes. So this is really uh, our go-to for mobile detailing. It also can get on plastics and it doesn't leave that nasty white residue over everything that a lot of other uh, compounds and polishes do. So this has been my go-to polish polish since the day it came out i ordered it right away and had to give it a try and i've been loving gold standard polish ever since we started using it so and i love the fact that you don't have to be so careful around the plastics and stuff you don't have to worry about getting the white swipes all over your plastics if you accidentally nick them which means you don't have to tape off a vehicle as as crazy as you normally do so it saves you hella time it's an awesome product and um I love DIY details polish. So definitely check out their polish if you guys haven't checked out their polish yet. Coming over here, guys, one huge thing that I absolutely love, guys, are right angle drills. Now, the last time that you guys saw this vehicle, I was actually using the Bauer right angle drill and this drill, I never had any problems with it or any issues with it. But uh, one thing that I was not always confident in was the battery life on here. The battery is just somewhat unpredictable, especially depending on the temperature that it is outside. I just don't think Bauer uses the best battery cells inside of their battery packs. Um, and so because of that, and because of the fact that I already use the Milwaukee M12 polisher for all our spot uh, touch-ups and scratch removals and all that kind of stuff and for sanding all that kind of stuff which is I think it's in my my polishing bag we'll get to that later but I went ahead and moved over to the Milwaukee M12 right angle drill. And this is now my go-to for all my drill brush needs. Um, anything that I need a drill for, this is what I use. I use the Milwaukee with a tiny little 2.0 battery. It's all you need for detailing, guys. You don't need these big, huge drills and all that kind of stuff. And a right angle drill is so much more so much more um, ergonomic than trying to use a regular drill to to drill your carpets and your your seats and your upholstery all that kind of stuff a right angle drill fits under seats and all sorts of stuff guys so if you guys have not been put on the right angle drill game i guarantee you guys i was one of the very first people using a right angle drill in the detailing world and ever since i've been seeing more people using right angle drills um so definitely get your guys self a right angle drill if you're late to the game but right angle drill totally works better over a standard drill and uh, the Milwaukee specifically is my go-to because it's so small so compact uses these tiny little batteries that charge really fast um I don't have any complaints on this guy so anyways I would go with the Milwaukee M12 if I was you guys but that is my drill of choice. Outside of that, guys, all the containers, the bottles, the IK foam sprayers and regular sprayers, all that stuff has stayed the same. Um, 
I do now have a quick and easy little access right here to a detail brush and I added another hook down here for keys and for my remote for all our electrical stuff inside the vehicle. But um, I did get this work stuff brush. I've never tried work stuff brushes. Um, like their standard brushes, but I do use their leather care, all their leather care brushes. And these are, were amazing. They work super good. One of them got a little burnt up during the accident and I had to replace it. So at the same time, I ordered just some, some this work stuff brush, the white albino one, um, just because I really wanted to try out their brushes. And since I got this one, guys, I think I'm definitely gonna be changing over my brushes in the future when I need to order new brushes. The brushes that I have now work really good, but this one, I just like the quality of it, the feel of it, everything about it, I love, especially over the kind of more generic brushes that I'm currently using. But let's see, guys, is that everything here in the back? So I think that is pretty much everything. Most of the stuff that's in here has stayed pretty much the same. We got some drill brushes. I do have some new picks that I just got off Amazon. Just some tiny little plastic picks for getting in some tighter areas. I didn't want to go with metal picks because the plastic should bend and mess up, hopefully, uh, instead of scratching and damaging uh, plastics and stuff inside the vehicle. So I want plastic picks and all that. Um, you know, we got our pet hair removal tool in here. I use the Anilon, or I think is the name of it. Uh, just a nice little one. It has three different sides to kind of scrape the carpeting or the upholstery in different ways. Uh, you know, applicator pads. Um, whole bunch of stuff in here, guys, but this pretty much carries a lot of the stuff that we need for interior details and all of that. And over here, guys, this is just my headlight bin. So everything in here is for headlights, quick headlight touch-ups. Um, we have a whole bunch of ceramic coatings from, Ceric or, uh, from uh, Cerakote. So I love their ceramic coatings. This is my go-to for headlight uh, for headlight reconditioning. We don't call it restoration unless we're doing clear coat, but for headlight reconditioning, we go with the ceramic coating. So we polish and then ceramic coat it. But anyways, that is a, uh that's pretty much everything in the back, guys. Uh, like I said, I love the auto or the uh, nano skin. Um, clay mitts and all that kind of stuff. So we use regular clay mitts as well. So we use clay mitts as well as regular clay. Um, I do find a use for both of them. Regular clay, I like for like getting detailed spots, all that kind of stuff. And these big guys, I like for using to get all the big areas. And the circle one, I use on a cheap, you know, SPTA, it's not cheap, but I use it on a less expensive SPTA 12 volt polisher, just the big six inch uh, polisher. Um, I use this on there just because it's super easy to use. And uh, yeah, it was, it was real convenient. So, um, so yeah. That is everything in the back, guys. So a few things have changed, but overall, a lot of the stuff is the same um, as it was before. Still got our laundry baskets in here. Um, some stuff I obviously still need to clean up. We still use our mother's little uh, polishers for our chrome wheels and stuff. These just work for uh, app applying some polish quick to some wheels, um, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I know this video is supposed to be about what's changing, so let me actually uh, pull you guys up to the sides of the vehicle, and I'm gonna show you guys anything that's changed on the sides, which honestly really hasn't been much. I'm just gonna do a little squeeze, lean, a little squat for the, a little, little squat for this one. Kind of an awkward height with the weird heighted tr small tripod that I'm using right now. But <laughs> anyways, guys, here we are at the passenger side of the detailing rig. And this is where I just kind of store a lot of the extra stuff. Now, typically I don't have it. I have uh, my polishing bag in the front seat right now. I just got a brand new one that I'm super excited to show you guys. But usually I have all my polishing stuff back here behind the seat. And then right down here, we have just a box of gloves. And then we got just some other products. 
So what are we changing over here for 2024? Number one, guys, I got a whole bunch of these glass strippers and I was kind of using them on some vehicles when I very first started, but now I don't really use glass strippers at all. I usually just use like steel wool if I have some really bad glass. This is an easy product to just throw back up on the shelf. Moving on, we also have this bottle of Rain X that got completely soaked or something happened to it. I don't know if I want this stuff in the vehicle anymore guys i do use rain x a lot um especially for like my clients that don't have ceramic coated windshields and stuff like that is a really good uh product lasts a decent amount of time um but uh this is you know, it's a lot of work to put this stuff on all the time. I'd prefer for my clients just to go ahead and get a ceramic coating. Then they're gonna be good for like a year or two. So yeah, instead of getting rain -X all the time, just get the $30 bottle of ceramic for your windshield and call it a day. This is what I've been holding the entire time in my hand. <laughs> this is one of my favorite detailing tools, guys, and that is just a foam, a little foam bottle, a foamer, foamer bottle. I don't know what you want to call them. Uh, people use these for like makeup and all that kind of stuff, but I use them all the time for detailing just to, uh, for my leather cleaner and for my APC. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two of these in here. My old ones, like the spring went out on them so they, they weren't like popping back up. That was kind of a pain. So I just got a new one of those just to toss in there. I'll get it filled up with some APC a little later. Um, and I think I'm gonna replace my slightly smaller bottle that I had in there of leather cleaner with this, you know, this one's I think a couple ounces bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that with this. But other than that, guys, honestly, everything that I was have been using from the past is definitely gonna work for 2024. All this stuff is pretty standard. We got some nice detailing brush in here these aren't like uh, work stuff or anything like that these are just some ones that I find on Amazon and they're extremely extremely soft and they're only like 10 bucks for a pair so you can buy them all year all year long and you know for the price of some brushes you could get like three sets of these so these are awesome brushes I like them a lot they're really cost effective and this is really all you need for cleaning interiors uh, we have our you know, our boar's hair brushes. We got some more stiffer brushes and some pla a plastic brush over here for uh, times that we need that kind of stuff. But for the most part, guys, everything in here is the same as from the past videos. I think I've already showed you guys some of the stickers for the buckets and all that kind of stuff. These got crazy faded over the past year of using them between all the chemicals that hit them all the time and uh, everything else, they just got super faded. So I think this year I'm gonna reach out to the same guy that typically makes all my hats, all my shirts, all that kind of stuff and see if he can get me some actual vinyl, nice vinyl waterproof decals for the buckets. And then if I can, I'll definitely make those files available for you guys so you guys can just kind of knock off those logos that I, those cheap little logos that I made and just kind of make your own, put your own logo in the center and then you got a nice little like circle decal to put on your buckets um and it works perfect for the chemical guys the small uh the smaller buckets from chemical guys and there's other companies that obviously make them too but the chemical guys ones are just super easy to get they sell them at my local auto parts store and over here which is this is kind of like this the side of the side but over here we have a couple new brushes these are my new tire brushes my new wheel brushes um this one works awesome to get into the smaller spokes the wheels that had the smaller spokes this one works really really good and this one right here works good for pretty much all other wheels that you just want to do that kind of thing too but the reason I got these over like the easy, I think they're the easy detail, you know, the brushes, the ones with the plastic bristles. Guys, I can't stand going in and out with those bristles and getting absolutely covered in nasty brake stuff. I just, I can't do that. So I use the wheel woolly type brushes versus the plastic bristled brushes and that's just what works for me that's what i enjoy using um and i hate getting all that spit back onto my arms and stuff so 
this is what I'm using. I'm not using any of those easy detail brushes right now just because I don't like the spit back from them. But you guys can use whatever you want. As you guys can see, not too much has changed over on this side of the vehicle. Um, we do have tough stuff in here just because I like using that for like uh, shorts, TikTok videos, all that kind of stuff. Um, what else has changed? We're using 3M specialty adhesive remover. Um, and I'm actually replaced all my stoners uh my stoners products like the uh tar and sap remover anything that was like that i now i only use the specialty adhesive remover this stuff you literally just need the tiniest little spray of it and it does so much so i'm using this now instead of any other tar or sap removers or adhesive removers this is just my new go-to it's a little pricey but it works phenomenally well for getting rid of anything, uh, any kind of adhesives, tars, uh, sap, all that kind of stuff that drips, that could get on your vehicle. Works really, really well. So that's pretty much everything, guys. That is the this side of the vehicle. I'm not gonna take you guys through the top of the vehicle because I actually really haven't changed too much. I did. One thing that I did also get rid of here for 2023 is my 100 foot hose. This is my 100 foot hose. It's just a, a hose from Home Depot, nothing fancy, but it's a really nice 100 foot hose and I had it up in our basket up here, but I never, ever, ever use the hose. Um, I only, I do have a second hose up here that's uh, I think 25 feet long or something like that, but it's one of those uh, elastic kind of hoses, the ones that, with the fabric on the outside with the rubber tube on the inside um, that kind of expands when you use it. Now I'm really only using that. All I need to do is refill the water tank in here so I don't need a huge 100 foot hose. Um, I'm just gonna end up putting this one outside here at the house so I can use this every morning to actually fill up and then I can just wheel it up back onto the hose reel uh that's sitting right next to the the spigot and then you know we'll be good with that i don't need to carry a 100 foot hose in the car uh usually most people when i'm at there out doing mobile details they already have a hose ready for me so i'm kind of just wasting space up in the basket carrying extra weight and all of that so i went ahead and i'm gonna get rid of the hose for this year i never ever ever use a 100 foot hose the 25 feet is plenty but other than that guys the basket is pretty much the same we have a little step a uh, 40 inch step ladder in there for uh cleaning the tops of suvs trucks all that kind of stuff we have our undercarriage cleaner we have an extension wand for uh, the bigger vehicles when we need it um and we have a small table in there just a simple lifetime black table it's the smaller more portable one um, I swapped that out for the four foot one that I used to have in here. And the only reason I did that is because I don't need a big four foot table in here. Um, it does fold down really nice and I might swap it back out, but most of the time this little black table that I've been using works perfectly fine. I just need something to hold a couple products and maybe wash down some floor mats, but I don't really need to nothing, anything too crazy. So, uh, so yeah. The basket is pretty much the exact same. Um, if anything, it's been it just has a couple things out of it, like the hose and some other little tools that I was just kind of throwing up there that were taking up space. Anyways, let's go ahead and move over to the other side of the vehicle so that I can show you guys uh, anything, a couple other things that I want to actually remove from here and um, some stuff that's going to be staying the same. So let's go over to that side and uh, I think think i only got one more thing to show you guys after that so all right guys and coming over to this side of the vehicle this is actually the side that just kind of carries all my waxes um which honestly i'm really not using a ton of waxes anymore for mobile detailing so i think it's about time to take out some of the stuff that's in here that we're not using and um and yeah really just kind of either replace it with better stuff or just leave more open space for stuff that we're gonna actually use so let's get some of this stuff out of here um, starting off with our trim shine from stoners guys I'm really highly debating on using this or uh, on using this moving forward or not it's an awesome product I love using it on my own vehicles but 
Um, I kind of have the aqua gloss that I'm already using. You can use that on plastics. It works really well. Um, and you can kind of buff it in if you want. Um, but yeah, I just don't find myself using this on a ton, ton of vehicles. And a lot of vehicles these days don't have a lot of those big plastics on them. So I'm kind of debating on whether or not I want to con continue carrying this in the detailing rig. But for now, I'm going to put it off to the side. Now, guys, this guy right here, this is Hydro Slick from Chemical Guys. When I very first started detailing, I was just buying uh, a lot of stuff from like the automotive store, right? Or your local uh, automotive store, even Walmart and stuff like that. And at the time, this was a brand new product and it was getting hyped up like crazy on uh, YouTube. A ton of different people were trying it, being like, oh yeah, this is a really good product. So I ended up buying two of these thinking that this was going to be the wax that I was going to end up using on a majority of my client cars that wanted to have their car waxed. Well, I find myself primarily using sealants these days, and yes, the light just went out, so I'm gonna get a new battery for the light in just a second, but I really don't find myself using this Chemical Guys Ceramic Hydro Slick. I don't find myself using this that much. I do love using it on my own vehicle, and I, this is the wax that I actually use on the detailing rig, and the detailing rig is always hydrophobic. Um, it's always, repelling water and stuff like that so i can tell you guys that this product is good and it does last a really really long time but there's just something about using chemical guys something that you can literally pick up at walmart that i just don't feel comfortable with when it comes to my customers vehicles and don't get me wrong chemical guys definitely has some good tools and they have a few products that i do enjoy using this being one of them but I just don't find myself using them professionally. So this is again, one of those products that I'm probably gonna end up shelving this year because I just don't use it professionally on customer vehicles. Most of the people coming to me these days that want protection, they either want like a specific sealant or something like that, or they want an actual ceramic coating. I don't have a ton of people coming to me for waxing. A lot of, I think a lot of people that wax are people that like and, and enjoy the process of dealing, detailing their own cars. They might wax their car every weekend or once a month or whatever, but it's something that they enjoy doing. And that's why I find myself doing a lot waxing is typically when I'm doing it for the enjoyment of waxing. Um, I typically don't find myself doing a ton of waxing when it comes to detailing anymore because people want sealants and people want ceramic coatings and stuff like that. So. I just haven't been doing a ton of waxing, guys. It's, it just is what it is, I guess. When I am using a wax, one wax that I actually really do like is just some simple Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax. I think this is gonna be a keeper for those few customers that do want wax, and this is something I can use by machine, I can use it by hand. Um, so it's really versatile, and it lasts like a solid six months, guys. So I do like the Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax, and I'm probably gonna keep carrying it along with the Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Detailer. Both of these products go really well together and I'm probably going to end up keeping them in the vehicle for now. Um, now let's go over some more stuff that I think we're going to get rid of. This is Rain-X Anti-Fog. I'm going to keep it in the vehicle because it's coming into springtime now and I find a lot of the people that come to us complain about foggy windshields so this is just an easy product something we can easily throw on to the detail we don't need to add any extra you know it's not any extra cost or anything it's just one of those nice conveniences for our clients to have no fog on their windshields so uh sometimes i use that but we really only find ourselves using that around fall and springtime but most of the other times a year we're not really using that stuff really at all because people aren't complaining about foggy windshields. Anyways, uh, graphene infused. I'm gonna have to, again guys, with these waxes, I just gotta put them to the side because I like the Meguiar, both of these Meguiar's waxes. I'm gonna go ahead and keep them just for the sake of having something on me. My Carnuba cream, I gotta have the Carnuba cream, guys. This is one of my favorite 
all it's just a all carnuba wax it works amazing it works really really good so i love this stuff um i'm going to go ahead and keep my white diamond this is like all the truckers want white diamond polish for their for their alcoa wheels so if you guys are familiar with alcoa wheels and you're you find yourself doing a lot of maintenance details and stuff like that this is the polish that nine times out of ten the your uh <laughs> the truck driver or the customer is gonna know about and ask for i don't know what is so popular about this uh product but all the truck drivers I know know about it and a lot of them use it. So I just have some in the car here. One of my main uh, maintenance clients is a truck driver and that is his preferred polish. He buys it for me when I'm out of it. <laughs> so I keep it on hand for him. Um, anyways, guys, I think the rest of this stuff I'm going to be keeping in here. Uh, so really we're just getting rid of the waxes this year. Um, and yeah, anything change this year? Oh, I'm going to be getting rid of all these Q-tips, guys. I've had these Q-tips since I started, and I don't use them because we just have way better stuff than those cheap Q-tips from Harbor Freight. Um, Steel wool, guys, again, because we're getting rid of all those glass strippers, so I'm going to be using, uh, because I really only use steel wool in, in uh, you know, cleaner now. Anything else in here that we really don't need anymore? I don't think so. These are the only Q-tips I'm going to be keeping are the standard size with the really long handles. So those are the only Q-tips I'm going to be keeping in here. Everything else is going to be pretty much staying the same. A lot of this is just like extra stuff like melanin foam. We got some extra wheel, wheel uh, applicator pads for tire shine and all of that but honestly most of that stuff is all going to stay the same um we still have our our little uh wheel savers or what do they call these things we still have our things to kind of keep the cables away from the wheels all that stuff we got our steamer we got our vacuum uh currently our air compressor is over there so we're gonna get that hooked back up in here in a in the next week that is everything on this side guys i don't really think there's too much to go over on this side of the vehicle so let me bust out the last thing that i want to show you the thing that i was most excited to show you guys but first i gotta go get a new battery for the camera and for the light so uh i'll be right back with our polishing bag that has tons of new stuff in it uh at least tons of new stuff for me as of last year so i'm gonna go ahead and grab that polishing bag and get some new batteries going i'll be right back all right, guys, so this is one of the parts that I was most excited to show you guys is uh, just a couple other things that we've really been doing more of lately. And one of those is PDR. So we've been doing a lot more paintless dent removal. I started doing this um, last year because there was a massive hailstorm and I my personal vehicle that I had at the time actually got tons of big hail dents in it so i didn't want to take it to a pdr place i love doing my own work and all that kind of stuff so i just thought yo this is just another skill that we can learn and we can incorporate into the detailing business and we can actually start doing more paintless dent removals at least the stuff that i'm confident that i can do so those simple dents um stuff like that we can easily pop those out with just this basic paintless dent removal kit. So this is something that I've been keeping in the vehicle because it's such an easy upsell when you're already doing like a full exterior detail or something like that. It's a really easy upsell to do to pull out some extra dents for 50, 60 bucks um, and make an extra 50, 60 bucks that day. And you can literally do, you know, just one dent you could charge 40, 50 bucks for. So so paintless dent removal guys there is a ton of money in it and if you guys can get some basic skills in paintless dent removal i would highly suggest adding this to your kind of repertoire of uh skills that you're kind of attaining as far as detailing goes um but yeah this is definitely something that i would recommend adding to your guys's uh, skill set just because it's every car has a dent practically every daily driver you know has a small dent that needs to get pulled every once in a while so 
this is a really, really good uh, service to add to your guys' mobile detailing business is paintless dent removal. Sometimes I get hired just to come out and pull a couple dents. So this is an awesome uh, service to add to your mobile detailing business if you guys haven't done it already. Now, moving on guys, this is what I really, really wanted to show you guys. This is something that I, I, uh, I just recently came across on Amazon. I didn't know they made it or anything like that, but as soon as I saw it, I had to have it. So that is this guy right here, which it's actually getting pretty heavy, but this is the new Rupes uh, bag. I don't know if this is a new bag. I just personally have not seen it yet. And, um, it is an amazing polishing bag. It has all the possible space that you guys could want in it. it has the uh, shoulder strap and uh, the handles on it are extremely heavy duty. And it has like kind of a, a form to it. So it's it's not like a, uh, a completely hard case or anything like that. It's not like completely stiff, but all the sides have like some kind of reinforcement in there, keeping everything more solid than like your typical clamshell bag or or something like that so this is a really high quality bag it almost reminds me of like some of my camera gear bags and stuff like that not quite that level but it, it's a really nice quality bag the zips on it are super nice everything's good on here um and it has like a bunch of extra pockets on the outside for to store whatever you guys want to store in here um, so yeah, I'm really loving this and I got some extra stuff in here that I just want to show you guys. Now, I guess we'll start with the front. Rupes is, has been my polishing brand now for about a year. I've been using all, almost all Rupes pads. I still have a couple of pads in here that I use more for, uh, waxing and, and stuff like that. Like, uh, these blue pads that I use for waxing. But anyways, guys, I have a couple things in here that are not Rupes, but for the most part, a majority of the stuff in here is Rupes. Now, Rupes has some extremely, extremely um, good Velcro on the back of their pads, and if you have one of their machines, their Velcro is probably some of the strongest Velcro out there on the market, which is a good and a bad thing bad because it can lead to you if you guys like to pull your pads off real fast you can't really do that with the rupes pads you need this tool right here and this actually wedges in between the pad and your machine and then you can easily just work the pad right off that way i love this tool for the rupes pads and it's a multi-purpose tool so you can use it to clean all the the polish and stuff off. You can use it to kind of give it a nice little scrape. Um, and you can use it for cleaning when you're actually going through the whole cleaning process and getting those all soaped down. You can use this to help scrub all the, the pads clean. Um, so this works really, really good. I love that it's kind of a real nice low profile kind of thing. It's real thin, um, but it works really, really good for getting your pads off. That's the main reason I bought it. In here, I just carry some, uh, just some car supplies warehouse um clay uh just a, a some clay bar here this is just for when we're doing spot small spot corrections and stuff um and I just want to work a real small area or if we're doing any kind of like detailed work, I usually use a clay bar versus a clay mitt for that. So anyways I do carry clay bar still um and well, oh, this is new to me. This is an R&D Instruments paint depth gauge. This will tell you the actual thickness of the of the clear coat that's remaining on your vehicle. Um, so this is something brand new that I'm using. I actually have never really polished a vehicle with one of these until now. So I've never had a problem in the past with polishing vehicles, and I think you can usually tell by eye about how much clear coat you have, but Honestly, this thing I just got as another safety precaution, a safety measure with all the polishing that I've been doing. Um, and I'm not really doing this as a hobby anymore. So having people pay me to do their cars, I really wanna know exactly how much paint I have to work with on every single vehicle. But again, guys, I haven't used a paint depth gauge before. I've never used one before. Um, and it's something new to me. So I don't 
think if you're just starting out in, in uh, you know, paint correction and all of that kind of stuff, I don't think it's necessary, but at the same time, it is kind of necessary because you're gonna come across that one car that you think has plenty of car clear coat or should have plenty of clear coat or the customer doesn't think that has ever been polished or anything before, but then you're gonna end up running into trouble with it. So I got the paint depth gauge just to have that reassurance on every vehicle that, hey, I got plenty of clear coat to work with. And especially with a lot of the new, new vehicles, um, if they were polished at the dealership or something and, you know, polished kind of heavy, maybe they had some, some defects after transporting and everything, then you might have a little clear coat to work with, especially with the new water-based clear coats that are on a lot of these newer vehicles. So again, guys, the paint depth gauge is kind of starting to get to be more and more important as the clear coats on these new vehicles are getting thinner and thinner and thinner. So anyways, guys, that's why I got the paint depth gauge, but I don't think it's a necessity. Um, if you're just getting into polishing and you're doing some light polishing and stuff like that, it's really when you start doing more sanding and heavy corrections that you guys really wanna have that paint depth gauge. Anyways, let's talk about pads because pads are something that have changed for me drastically over the past couple of years. Now, I have a ton of different pads right now, and I think out of all the old pads that I had, I was using Chemical Guys pads. Um, Chemical Guys has a few things that I actually do like from them, and one of the things that I do uh, like using or used to like using are their pads. They have two different kinds of pads. They have these, uh, the Hex Logic Quantum pads, and they have the regular Hex Logic pads. One of them has a hole, one of them doesn't. Um, the hole is supposed to help dissipate the heat and all that, and the Quantum Logic pads actually have the, uh, the taper at the end of the pad instead of a straight pad like a, like a standard pad. So. Anyways, I think the only pads that I am going to keep from Chemical Guys in my bag for the 2024 season, and I'm sure I might use some of these uh, on occasion. I still like Chemical Guys pads. I've just found something that I like better. So I'm gonna put these pads off to the side. Those are gonna go um, just on the shelf for now, and I'm sure I'll still use them, but again, those aren't gonna be my go-to to carry in my bag for mobile detailing. Now, um, just to kind of show you guys what I typically use for waxing and for clay barring, that, that is this machine right here. So sometimes I will put one of those Nano Skin six inch clay mitts or clay pads on here and i'll actually use this on all the flat areas of the car and then i'll use uh the clay bar for any of those real tight little detail areas and i'll use my clay mitt for all the stuff that you kind of want to work by hand um and stuff like that so anyways guys the, this is you know the machine that i use this is just a little spta uh six inch I don't even know if they call it a polisher. I just call it a waxer. Cause really for me, it, it works good for waxing. It works good for clay barring and stuff like that. But I, I've never used it for actual correcting a car. I think it would take forever. Um, but I don't know, I've never used it. Never used it for corrections. Um, moving on guys. Now, just so you guys know what kind of pads I am using, I use all Rupez pads. So this is one of their fine grade pads. This is one of their medium grade pads. This is one of their uh, microfiber pads. All their pads are amazingly good. Um, the backings on them are super, super strong, almost to the point where they're too strong. Um, this this one ripped before I got that little, the specialty tool to take off the pads. And that's what actually made me wanna get that specialty tool is because uh, just taking these pads off can be a little aggressive sometimes because of how good the Velcro is on these. I do have a couple other little four inch hex logic pads from Chemical Guys and I really only use these guys for like if I'm doing a quick little spot or something like that um, or headlights. I use these a lot for headlights just because they, they seem to be a really good uh, cut for uh, headlights. I don't know, they, they just seem to work really good for headlights. Those are the pads that I'm using now guys but the biggest thing that I changed moved all of my tools over to Milwaukee. Now Milwaukee has this freaking amazing little 12 volt polisher. 
uh, and you can use it for sanding. So this works amazing for spot corrections when you have like uh, scratches uh, or imperfections that you need to, to hit. You guys can first hit it with the sander. This has a built uh, sanding speed is number two. So it spins way faster on the sanding speed. But you guys can throw on your whatever size uh, backing plate that you guys want. This one has an interface pad on here as well. And then I have a whole bunch of th uh, little three inch Rupes pads that we can use with this guy. <laughs> so this thing works amazing. I usually don't use the interface pad with a pad. Um, usually that's more for sanding, but just so you guys get an idea of what we're working with here. Um, but yeah, so I love the Milwaukee M12 polisher. This made me want to switch all my tools over to Milwaukee. And I only really have a couple other tools that I want to switch over, like the polisher. I'm still using my Grios G9 polisher. This kit that I'm kind of putting together for polishing, it is turning into an awesome kit. It does everything that I need it to do for mobile detailing. No, I don't have the best polisher in the world. Um, this is only like a two un, sub $200 polisher, but it gets a job done every single time. If I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I would love to upgrade to the Milwaukee polisher. That's kind of like a 450 to $500 investment once you get batteries and everything. Um, so I just kind of been putting that off. This is totally doing everything I need it to do right now. The Griot's Garage DA is really, really good. It does happen to be one of the cheaper DAs on the market. But again, guys, I see more professionals using the Griot's Garage Polisher than any other polisher out there. So I think that kind of proves that um, it's a lot more about the technique and the person uh, doing the work than it is uh, than it has to do with the actual machine that you're using. The machine that you're using may make the job take a little less time. It may make you work a little less, but it's all about the uh, the user at the end of the day that's really going to get those results um, that you want. You could give a complete novice all the best equipment, the best compounds, the best all that kind of stuff and i guarantee you you give somebody a professional a g9 polisher and some off the wall pad and they will get the job done they will have much better final results than somebody that doesn't know what they're doing that's using the best tools in the world so I don't, i'm not in any kind of a rush to get a new polisher right now um but when i do get a new polisher i'm going to first get a rotary polisher and stick with my G9. So I don't, I'm not in any kind of a rush to get a new polisher right now. A few moments later. Cheers. And I'm pretty much using a lot of this, I think, the last video, I was already using Rupes polishes, guys, but the Rupes polishes are literally some of the best polishes on the market, hands down. And honestly, I don't see them getting enough love, guys. Go check out some Rupes uh, compounds and polishes. They have amazing, amazing compounds, polishes, and um and every they even have a standalone i haven't even used it yet because i'm always using their other stuff but the the uno advanced this is a standalone uh protection and maintenance polish so you guys could uh use that on all your maintenance cars we got a one step right here it's the uno protect one step polish and sealant um, all these products, you guys, are amazing from Rupes. They work really, really good. And the only other polish or the only other c compound that I'm carrying right now is 3D1, uh, which is the cut compound. It's a one-step cut and finishing polish. This this kit that I'm kind of putting together for polishing, it is turning into an awesome kit. It does everything that I need it to do for mobile detailing. That is my polishing bag. It has all my, and again, this is just to show you guys, this is another bottle of white diamond bought for, bought for, for me by the exact same truck driver who buys me all this white diamond polish. Um, every time he comes to me for a maintenance detail, it's like he has another fresh bottle of white diamond he's like yo you need another 
another bottle of that white diamond polish? I'm like, nah, dude, I still got a ton from the last time. So anyways, I got two bottles of white diamond polish for you, Bob, when you need uh, your next detail. That is kind of the last thing that I wanted to show you here. I definitely appreciate you guys kind of bearing with me uh i just getting back after this accident so i know i'm looking a little rough but i promise i will not look like this my whole entire life i have a an appointment with my uh with a plastic surgeon coming up this wednesday and hopefully i get some good news then um hopefully i get some new like creams and stuff to use kind of on this as well as maybe like a future plan of how i'm gonna exactly be able to go in and get like some laser scar removal or something of that sort to kind of speed up this process um otherwise i think that it could be a few years before all of these were to kind of fade naturally um but i definitely don't want to wait a few years for these things to fade if i don't want if i don't have to but anyways guys i definitely feel a little uh, uncomfortable on camera uncomfortable in my own skin if you will but you know what i gotta move on i gotta continue i got a business to run i got a family to feed and i'm not gonna let a couple scars hinder what I'm trying to accomplish so I definitely appreciate you guys bearing with me these next maybe year or two um who knows how long I'm gonna have who knows how long this is gonna be but I don't want to let this hinder me or my business or the things that I'm trying to accomplish so fuck it guys sometimes you just gotta roll with the blows and uh take them as they come and it's all about how you guys kind of uh it's all about how you guys make the best out of a bad situation that really shows your character and like i said guys i am not gonna let this these blemishes take away the smile on my face so anyways guys i will see you guys in the next video i hope that you guys are doing well and haven't been in any accidents lately but thank you guys for being here thank you guys for following along with the channel subscribing if you guys did and i will see you guys in the next video peace